Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Xerox Dev Talks. So in this episode, we'll be talking about TX Relay API. And if this is your first time watching, well, Xerox Dev Talks is a series where we cover implementation best practices, as well as give you behind the scenes discussions with our engineers and product teams. And I'm your host, Jessica Lin, developer advocate at Xerox. So Xerox recently launched beta access for TX Relay API, which allows you to create the smoothest DEX trading experience for your users by enabling both gasless approvals and gasless swaps. And you might be wondering, well, why is this important? Well, the number one cause of abandoned trades is insufficient gas. And we've heard as high as 30% for one of our beta partners. So what this means is when a user is going through the flow, if at some point they realize, oh, I don't have enough gas to continue, they might just leave and just leave your app all together. So TX Relay API was created for Web3 teams such as yourself to help reduce this point of friction for your users and significantly hide away all these complexities that are commonly associated with DeFi trading. And if this sounds interesting to you, keep watching this video. I'll give you a tour of what is TX Relay, why you use it, how it works, as well as cover how to implement it by going through a demo app that covers core concepts that you can easily port over to any application that you're building with TX Relay API. And as I mentioned before, beta access is available now. So check out the link down in the thread or description below. So first off, what is it? Well, TX Relay API is a REST API with four different endpoints and the infrastructure that help you create that smooth trading experience. It enables you to provide a gasless experience specifically at those two points that require gas. So first when approving a token allowance and submitting that transaction to the blockchain. With TX Relay implemented, both of these actions, that approval and the submitting the transaction to the network, become gasless, which helps reduce bottlenecks that end users have when making crypto swaps. And some of the benefits include more reliable transactions, actually bringing the lowest revert rates in DeFi, and we have data to back that one up, faster trade confirmations, and MEV protection. Some of the top applications are already building with TX Relay, including Coinbase Wallet, Robinhood, and Matcha. The logical next question is, why is gas such a big problem? Well, let's take a look at a standard user swap flow. So you say this user wants to sell a token from their wallet. Even before they do this, make the swap, they must approve a token allowance. What this means is I've allowed the application to move this token from their wallet on their behalf. So this transaction requires the user to hold a small amount of the chain's native token to pay for this approval. So that might be holding ETH for mainnet or Matic for Polygon. In addition, users also need to hold this native token in order to pay network fees to the chain in order to submit that transaction onto the chain. So this all means if I just want to sell USDC on the Polygon network, I still need to go get some Matic just to pay the gas for the approval of the token allowance and the gas to even make this trade, even though I'm selling USDC. So in short, it's a lot of overhead just to make one trade. Users have to overcome this hurdle by preloading wallets, moving balances across apps, sending tokens between addresses just to initiate a transaction. And this all becomes a significant barrier to more widespread adoption. Even for existing DeFi users, it's just as annoying when gas spikes or when we're exploring new chains and ecosystems, or simply just trying to make a mobile trade on the go where it can be hard to juggle multiple interfaces. Now, with all this in mind, ZeroX created the TX Relay API, which again, allows you to create that smooth DeFi trading experience by hiding away the complexities related to approvals and swaps for our users. Using TX Relay, our users don't ever have to scramble to get gas which allows you as a developer to build more intuitive user flows into your application, drastically reducing usage drop-offs and improving your conversion funnel. Now, why should you use it? I mentioned a couple of reasons above, but I wanna take a look at a case study to show exactly what TX Relay can do in practice. Let's take a look at our very own Matcha, a DEX aggregator built by ZRX who has implemented the TX Relay API to power our Matcha Auto feature. 
Well, since launching with TX Relay API, Matcha has simplified their user experience, can provide faster and better trades for their users, has increased their user activity, seeing a 7% increase in the number of trades that they have quarter over quarter, while the number of daily active trades has actually gone up by 20% has increased their user retention numbers. They were able to set this up and get all these gains in just two months because setting up TX Relay was so simple to integrate. And lastly, another really interesting number I want to call out is the Matcha Auto feature, the one that uses TX Relay API, actually now has the lowest revert rates in DeFi at only 1.5%. And overall, the revert rates dropped to just 6% when compared to over 10% from competitors such as One Inch and Uniswap. And I highly recommend checking out the case study with all these details and stats linked down below. Okay, so I have to admit, these are some pretty impressive numbers. And you're probably wondering, how does TX Relay API provide a gasless experience? Doesn't it still require gas to submit the transaction to the chain? In short, yes, but we don't want our end users to have to worry about this. So the term gasless refers to the ability for users to not need to pay gas at the moment of the approval or the swap submission. Instead, a third party such as Xerox will submit the transaction to the blockchain and pay the gas fee, taking the headache away from our end users. So technically there is still gas involved. We are working with a decentralized system after all. It's just being paid by someone else and the user never has to worry about the gas when submitting their transaction. Now under the hood, TX Relay is made possible with a couple of key concepts that I'll go over here. First off is EIP 712. This is a standard, the EIP standard, that enabled typed message signing. What this means is it allows wallets to display the data that appears to the user in a prompt that is human readable rather than just a blind hash. Next is EIP 2612. So this EIP added a new function called permit to ERC20 tokens. This permit function allows users to grant permission to a third party to spend tokens on their behalf. And using this, end users can grant Xerox permission to pay the gas needed for approving token allowances and submitting transactions. Next is the concept of meta transactions. These are messages that authorize smart contracts to perform actions on your behalf. Now let's start putting all these pieces together. Let's take a look at the gasless approvals process. So gasless approvals is possible when the user signs that EIP 712 message, that human readable message, giving TX Relay the permission to set the allowance on the token. And in our current architecture, it's either Xerox or a market maker that pays this gas fee, thereby giving the user a gasless experience. And this is, again, all possible with that permit extension provided by EIP 2612. Next is the idea of the gasless transaction. So when we're submitting the trade on chain, that part is going to be gasless. And so here, the user also signs a EIP 712 message. And this message gives TX Relay API permission to submit the transaction on behalf of the user to the blockchain. This part is possible with meta transactions that I mentioned above. And in our architecture, TX Relay pays the gas that's required to submit the transaction uh, using some of the user's sell token to pay this gas. Two more concepts that I want to bring up are meta transaction V2 and OTC orders. So these are two types of orders or uh, transactions that are returned by the TX Relay API. And these are concepts uh, more specific to Xerox rather than the ecosystem at large. Meta transaction V2 uh, uses swap API under the hood to fetch indicative pricing and quotes. And for these types of orders, Xerox submits these transactions to the blockchain on behalf of the user. So in order to interact with the API, we'll be using four different endpoints, price, quote, submit, and status. And let's walk through how to put all these endpoints together along with the concepts that I just covered in a user flow. Now, when your user comes to your application, they are going to be swapping an ERC20 token. At this point, we check whether or not a token allowance has already been set on the token. If not, then we check whether or not this ERC20 supports the permit function. And if it does, we can go through the this leg of the TX Relay API flow. 
So from here, the API can provide an indicative price that is the price that the user is looking at when they're just browsing in your application. From there, when the user finds a price that they like, the API returns a firm quote. Along with the firm quote, the user can sign an EIP 712 message that contains an approval object and a trade object. The user can sign this EIP 712 message, giving TX Relay API permission to pay for the gas, the gas for the approvals and the trade. And from there, TX Relay now has permission to submit the transaction on behalf of the user to the blockchain in a way that is gasless to the user. And then from there, we can use the status endpoint to check whether or not the trade was submitted successfully, and then display a confirmation to our end user. So that was a case in which the token allowance was not already set, and the token uh, does support permit, which allows us to give the gasless approval. We can look at other variations in which the token allowance is not set, but the token doesn't support permit. In this case, we can't provide gasless approvals, but we can provide a gasless submission. There's also a case in which the token allowance has already been set, um, then we can just directly jump to getting a quote and then submitting the transaction in a gasless way for the end user. All right, so who should consider using TX Relay? Well, I would say swapping applications that are end user facing. So these include wallets, portfolio managers, payment products, swapping widgets. You know, if your project just wants to reduce drop-offs as well as reduce the number of failed trades, increase your user activity, I think implementing a gasless flow really helps increase user retention as well as upping the adoption of your product. All right, so in this next section, I will walk you through the TX Relay API demo app that's built with Next.js. It's gonna cover best practices when implementing a gasless approval and gasless swap functionality into your app or workflow. And the principles that I'm gonna cover here are the same ones that are used by production level apps, such as in the Matcha Auto feature of the Matcha XYZ product that I talked about earlier. And if you need to review it again, everything that I'm covering here is in the written guide linked down below. Now here's a walkthrough of the app. So this demo will show how to trade two tokens on the Polygon network, specifically USDC to Rapmatic. And there's a reason I chose these two specific tokens, and it's because USDC is a gasless approved token, which means it's an ERC-20 that supports permit, while Rapmatic is a non-gasless approved token, so it does not support the permit function. And using these two tokens, we'll be able to understand how the TX Relay API flow handles these two types of tokens. All right, before going through the walkthrough, make sure you are familiar with these tools and concepts. React, Next.js, specifically App Router, um, and then Vim and Wagme. Also, if you need a review on understanding TX Relay, make sure to read the documentation. The, there's an introduction to TX Relay, as well as an understanding TX Relay API guide uh, that I recommend checking out. And currently, TX Relay API is supported on mainnet and polygon and this demo is built on polygon you can always modify this app to support mainnet by simply adjusting the chain id in the header for each endpoint so let's start by taking a look at the project structure and looking at important files to help give you a lay of the land this demo app was set up using next.js app router so one of our top files here is the app directory this directory is a root directory that contains the global structure of the application it contains shared layouts, additional configurations, as well as our API and component directories. The layout file here contains the global layout of the components, so the layouts that wrap all our pages. And speaking of pages, this file contains all the components, so the page view, the quote view, and status view of our app, so the components that are going to show up in the UI. And speaking of pages, uh, this file here contains the components of our page view, our quote view, and our status view, as well as the logic for when each of these show up in the UI. Additionally, we have our providers file, and this sets up global context providers, such as Rainbow Kit Provider and Wagme Config. Also under app, we have our API directory, and this contains the API routes, including the route for price, quote, submit, and status, along with the components that I mentioned earlier. So this contains the page view, quote view, and status view. Also, we have our source directory. This contains non-component 
or non-API route files. In this case, we have our token lists. So we have a JSON file of all the tokens that support gasless approvals. So these are tokens that um, support permit, as well as our utility files. All right, so as we know now, TX Relay offers four different endpoints. And it's important to understand how all these endpoints should be leveraged by the UI UX components and how they are related to other concepts such as connecting to the wallet and these token lists. If you've built a swap app before, most of this should be familiar with a few caveats. And it goes without saying that these concepts are transferable to almost any token swapping app that you are building. All right, so first up, Rainbow Kit. So Rainbow Kit is a React library that makes it easy to add wallet connection to your application. And for this demo, I've leveraged their Next.js app router example. You can check out their installation instructions to understand the configurations, as well as configure it to your desired chains. And to set it up, it's pretty easy. We'll just set up a project ID here in the providers.tsx file. In this project ID, we can get from Wallet Connect Cloud, and this is because Rainbow Kit relies on Wallet Connect. So you can get your free project ID just by signing up with a Wallet Connect Cloud account. So next are the token lists. So TX Relay API offers gasless approvals and gasless swaps for supported tokens. And it's important to understand which tokens are applicable and how to check for support availability. Now there are two lists I want you to keep in mind. There's the gasless approvals token list, and you can find a list of these tokens that work with gasless approvals here in this list in the documentation. So these are tokens that support EIP 2612. Remember, these are the tokens that the ERC20 tokens that support the permit function. You can also examine a token's eligibility at the time of trading by checking the response that we get back from the quote endpoint. If the variable is gasless available, return back with the value true, then this token does support gasless approvals. The second list is the supported sell tokens list. So this is a more general list, but on the mainnet, TX Relay supports selling ERC20 tokens that are on Uniswap's token lists. And on Polygon, all tokens that Swap API supports, TX Relay API will support as well. And if you recall, the demo shows how to use these two lists specifically for the Polygon network. So here we're trading USDC. Remember, this is a gasless approved token on the Polygon supported sell list. And we are using it to buy Wrappedmatic, which is a non-gasless approved token. All right, so let's take a look at how it shows up in the code. Well, we'll need to check that the sell token is in the gasless approval token list. And to do this, we're gonna set up a JSON file. Um, I'm gonna call it 137.json and put it into this supports-permit folder. And inside of it, I'm gonna set up this database of tokens and these tokens all support permit. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the token address as the key. So we can look at the first object here. Uh, we have USDC and it's keyed by its token address and it contains information such as um, the kind, domain, name, version, chain ID, version contract, salt, and domain separator. So we might not be using all of these pieces of information in the app, but they are here if we need them. And to reiterate, this is a database of all the tokens that support permit on Polygon. And you can go ahead and copy and paste this database for your own use if you need to. And then we are gonna check the sell token against this list. So anytime a sell token is picked by the user in the interface, uh, we can check if that token exists in this database. And here's an example of that logic. So now let's start looking at the UI here. So this first component is the price view component. And it's used for when users are browsing for a price without committing to a trade. In other words, they're just getting an indicative price. So the code for this component lives inside app slash components slash price. And the logic for it, when it appears, is gonna be inside the slash app slash page file. So let's walk through what the user can do from this view. So the user can select their buy and sell tokens. You can add in uh, token selector dropdowns, but I've gone ahead and just hard coded it here because it's a simple demo. From here, the user can input a sell amount and then whatever that sell amount changes, the app will fetch a new price, even if a wallet isn't connected yet. 
when the user is ready to make a trade, they can connect their wallet. And this connect wallet here, remember, is powered by Rainbow Kit. And once the user has connected their wallet, this button here now reads review trade. If the user has enough of the sell token, otherwise it's going to read insufficient balance. So behind the scenes, the app is going to check whether or not a sufficient allowance has been set for this token. In addition, it's going to check whether or not the sell token supports permit. If it does, then we can go down the gasless approval route if needed. Otherwise, we'll need to do the approval via the standard token approval route. And that's a pretty standard process that we have done with Swap API before. If you have questions about that, uh, check out this guide about token allowances in the documentation. Now, based off of those two checks, we're going to set the check approval flag, depending on whether the user has sufficient allowance and whether or not the sell token supports permit. And from here, the user can click review trade and they are taken to the quote view component. And from here, the check approval flag is passed over to quote. All right, so now taking a look at the code, I mentioned before that we're going to fetch the price here. So the fetch price endpoint is going to be wrapped behind the prices route. And in the UI, it's going to be triggered by the use effect hook. And that's set up here in the price component. Now, the reason we're wrapping our API key is that we want to protect it because all API requests are viewable by someone if they inspect the browser, but we don't want them to inspect and be able to find our keys. Instead, when the user now queries for an indicative price, it's going to ping our API setup, the one that's behind slash API slash price slash route. And then that is going to ping the TX Relay API using the API key in the header. And in addition, we're going to use Nexus built in data fetching pattern and use the use effect hook uh, in order to make this request. So use effect is going to be triggered uh, whenever there's some UI update. So specifically here, whenever the sell amount changes. So whenever the sell amount changes, um, the API will be repeated. Another piece that's important here is how we're going to display sell amount and buy amount. And there's going to be two functions that will be important for you to take a look at. It's going to be parse units and format units. And these both come from the ethers JS library. So parse units helps you go from a string into a big number and format units goes from the other way. So you can take a big number value and then turn that into a string. This is useful for taking the big number value returned from the API and then displaying that as a string in the UI. And one more thing in the code here is the check approval flag. So I mentioned above that check approval is used when we're making a quote request. When we make this quote request, we can pass the check approval flag. And this flag is a Boolean that indicates whether or not we want to check for approval so that we could potentially use the gasless approval feature. The value of the check approval is determined by whether or not the user has already set a token allowance, if that token allowance is sufficient, and if the selected token supports permit. So here's how all that would look in logic. So check approval flag is set to the value of does the sell token support permit and whether or not the user has a sufficient allowance. So below I've mapped out a diagram to help us understand how the different cases change the value of check approval, how that changes what the button says in price view, as well as what shows up downstream in quote view. So let me just quickly run through this. The default text here will say insufficient balance if the user doesn't have enough of the sell token. If the user does have enough token, then we might move into case one. So here's an example in case one, we're swapping USDC to Wrappmatic. And in this case, um, the sell token here, USDC, does support permit. And in this case, no allowance has been set on the token yet. So therefore, check approval is going to be set to true because we're going to need both the approval object downstream for gasless approvals and the trade object that's going to be used for gasless swaps. In an alternative scenario, we're also swapping USDC for Rapmatic, but in this case, um, the sell token USDC, again, it supports permit, but in this case, a max allowance has already been given. So there's enough allowance to cover the trade. So therefore, check approval is going to be set to false because we don't need a gasless approval object in this case. We only need the trade object for the gasless swap. So we don't need the gasless approval object because we don't need an approval. The approval's already been set. So this means downstream, check approval will be false, and we will only receive back the sign trade object. So I want to call out that the demo currently um, doesn't cover the next 
two cases, cases three and four, but I've added them here in the overview in case you decide to include them um, as you build out your application. So for case three, we're gonna go the other direction. So Wrapmatic to USDC. So in this case, the sell token is gonna be Wrappedmatic. And Wrapmatic does not support permit. And in this case, the allowance is gonna be enough to cover the trade. In this case, we're gonna set check approval to false. And this is because we don't need a gasless approval object to sign. We only need the trade object uh, because we can't support a gasless approval in this case. So if we follow uh, this route downstream, uh, once we review the trade, quote is passed check approval with the value set to false, and then we get back only the signed trade object. And for the last case, we are swapping Wrapmatic to USDC. So in this case, the sale token is Wrapmatic. And remember, Wrapmatic does not support permit. And in this case, no allowance has been set yet. So in this case, the token allowance needs to be set via the standard route because gasless approvals are not supported in this case. So once the token allowance has been set, this case will look identical to case three. In other words, a token with no permit support, but there is max allowance. So therefore, check approval is gonna be set to false because we don't need that gasless approval object and we only are gonna get back that trade object for a gasless swap. So note out of all these cases, the only one where we set check approval to true is when the token does support permit and no allowance has been set yet. So this is the only time when we need a gasless approval. Now, once the user hits the review trade button, we're gonna move over to the quote view component. So in this component, we're gonna fetch a firm quote for our user. And from here, the user can review this quote and submit the trade if they like it. The logic for when this component appears is gonna be back in that app slash page file. So on this page, the user can now sign a gasless approval if it's applicable, as well as sign the gasless swap and submit this order. So when we look at what's returned back from the quote endpoint, we see that it returns back both the gasless approval object, so approval.eip712, and the gasless trade object, so trade.eip712. So even though these two objects are bundled together, um, each of them need their own signature. All right, so let's walk through what's happening in this quote view. So here we're gonna display both the sell and buy amounts that the user is gonna pay and receive. If they like this quote, they can hit sign approval. And this is going to sign the approval.eip712 approval object. And this object is gonna contain all the information necessary to process a gasless approval. And remember the way that we got this was by setting check approval back in price view. And next is gonna be the sign trade button. And so this was gonna sign the trade object, that trade.eip712. And again, this object is gonna contain all the necessary information to process a gasless trade. And once both objects are signed, the user can submit the trade hitting the submit order button. Be aware that the quote is time sensitive. So it's only gonna be valid for about 30 seconds. One way to handle this is to add a timer that automatically refreshes the quote in order to make sure that it stays fresh for the user. Otherwise, you might get an error when submitting this order. So here are some important code pieces to look at in this part. So we're gonna fetch the quote um, with the check approval flag. Again, we're gonna fetch quote um, by wrapping it behind the quote route, and it's gonna be triggered by use effect, similar to what we did for price view. The value of check approval is gonna be passed from price view. And recall that this is a Boolean that indicates whether or not to check for approval and potentially return the approval object for a gasless approval. And next, let's talk about signing the objects and splitting the signatures. So to take advantage of the gasless approvals, uh, users need to sign that approval and trade object. So the approval.eip712 and the trade.eip712 objects that are returned by quote. These objects contain everything that we need to sign them. So th things like domain, types, primary type and message. To sign these objects, we're gonna use Wagme's use sign typed data hook. And what's returned back after we sign it is an Ethereum signature hex string. So here's the code for signing the approval object. And this lives inside app components quote. So we're gonna use sign type data. We're gonna pass in domain, message, primary type, 
and types. And again, these are all provided to us by the approval object. So we're just pulling those out and then plugging them into this hook. And let's take a look at signing the trade object. It looks very similar. We're going to call use sign typed data hook and then pass it these same values from the trade object. So once this has been successfully signed, um, this signature that we get back actually needs to be split into its individual components. So V, R, and S. And these individual components um, need to be formatted into an object that we can post to the submit endpoint. So to see what that looks like, um, let's take a look over into the docs here. So in the submit endpoint, we can look at an example request. So in order to post to submit, it says here that the sign split and formatted approval and trade objects must contain the following key value pairs. So this trade object needs to have type, EIP 712, signature, and that signature has to have VRS and the signature type. So there's different methodologies for splitting signatures out there. I've provided an implementation of it inside the signature file um, that's inside utils. Let's take a look at how to use it to split the signature for approval. So in this case, if the gasless approval uh, signature exists, meaning we got a gasless object back, we've signed it, we can split it by calling split signature. And that same thought process is going to be used to split the signature for the trade object and then create the trade data that we need to post to submit. So once the approval and trade objects have been signed, their signatures have been split, and that data has been properly formatted, we can post this to the submit endpoint. And submit is going to be wrapped behind our submit route. And this will be called from the submit order button in the UI. So if the submission was successful, submit endpoint will return back this object with the order type and the trade hash. All right, now moving on to our final component. This is a status view. So this component is going to check and display the status of the trade to the user. Status view is displayed when we have a trade hash uh, that we got back from the submit endpoint. And if we take a look at what shows up for the UI here, we either get the phrase transaction pending if the transaction submission has not been confirmed or transaction completed if the transaction was successfully mined. So let's take a look at how it's implemented in the code. So we can ping the status endpoint to check whether or not the submitted trade was successful. Status will return back to us with the status of the transaction, and that can be either pending, failed, submitted, succeeded, or confirmed. This means we'll need to continuously pull this endpoint to check on its current status. And we can do so by using the set interval function coupled with the use effect hook. Set interval takes a callback function as well as a delay in milliseconds. So inside use effect, we are going to query the status endpoint by appending the trade hash. So note that trade hash is not passed as a query program. It's just going to be concatenated as part of the query. So I got tripped up on this when building it, so I just want to call that out. What's returned back to us um, from status is an object that contains the status. And so based off of this, we can check whether or not the status is confirmed. And if it's not, we will keep pinging status until it becomes confirmed. And here I've set it to a repeatedly ping it every 3,000 milliseconds. So once the transaction has been confirmed, we'll change from the transaction pending message to the transaction completed message. And with that, we have wrapped up this code walkthrough. All right, and with that, we wrap up this demo and this video. As you've seen, building with TX Relay allows you to efficiently implement gasless approvals and gasless swaps into your app or workflow, helping you grow your user base with seamless onboarding and thereby increasing user retention. Make sure to check out the demo that's linked down below, as well as the guide and case studies that I've covered in this video. And definitely sign up for beta access to TX Relay now. Beta access allows you to test gasless approvals, gasless swaps, as well as setting and collecting fees on your app to help you grow your product. And with that, thanks again for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to follow along when we release more videos like this. And happy swapping!